Hello and welcome to another Lightboard session. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs. A lot of SLs, isn't it? Uh, let's get started. And these are some of the, you know, some of the acronyms created by Google when they started their site reliability engineering. And when you talk about SRE or site reliability engineering, uh, these concepts become sort of uh, essential things to know. And then it all boils down eventually to the observability or the monitoring that we are talking about in this topic. And that is the reason why I would like to cover it during this particular chapter. So let's get started with our first concept that is SLAs. Now what are SLAs? SLAs is the contract between uh, the provider and the client or the subscribers basically and SLAs guarantee let's say if you are running a large scale site um, and uh, you have consumers or the customers who are using it or you are you you know you are providing a service uh, it's basically a service provider and the customer so if you're providing a service for example Google has all of these services uh, including, uh, let's say, uh, the Google Cloud Engine and uh, the Gmails and uh, some of the, you know, API-based services and so on. Uh, so especially, let's say, if you're a Google Cloud customers, uh, you want a guarantee that your infrastructure will be up and the services will be running at least, uh, you know, uh, reliably up to a certain extent of time. And SLAs is a contract between the service provider and their clients. And generally, SLAs are defined in uh, the percentage. So it could be, let's say, I have an SLA of, let's say, assume that 99%. Uh, so that gives the service provider a leeway of using the 1% to perform their maintenance activities or one, for 1% 1 of the time, the site could possibly be down and that is an acceptable agreement and that's what this 99% translates to. Now, when you talk about SLAs, SLAs are stringent because uh, if you breach the SLAs and if you do not comply to that as a service provider, you would have to generally, uh, you know, compensate the clients in the in the form of money or credits or in certain way or some way if you breach the if you don't you know com comply to the SLA so SLA is very strict sort of a agreement and uh, if you talk about how does it translate to your product engineering and site reliability teams so you definitely have to comply the SLAs and how do you guarantee that is where so Google came up with this idea of internal SLAs so instead of you know just working towards this 99% which is given to the client you work work on a tighter SLAs internally and what they came up with the naming for that was SLOs SLO stands for the service level objective it is similar to SLAs but it is just more stringent so instead of say 99% i would say hey i want to comply uh, 99. Point, you know nine percent here or a little higher than that so this is generally low lower this is higher number why that way you have some buffer even if you don't comply to this you will eventually sort of you don't uh, ensure that uh, you don't breach this one and how do you do that you just add some buffer here so this make it a little more stricter and this is your internally commun co communicated slos between your product teams and the site reliability teams who are the, the site reliability teams are the ones who manage and work towards the reliability and they are the ones who maintain that infrastructure and um, you know they design and they basically come up with the monitoring tools to provide you with SLOs and uh, then the SLOs are nothing but the service level objectives which gives you let's say uh, uh, and you know if you want to translate this SLO into um, you know a plain English language you can say that oh my site should be available for 99% of the 99.9% uh, .9 of time uh, and you can measure the uptime you can measure the latencies you can measure the number of requests you can measure the number of errors and based on that you can create the SLOs so you can say that hey for my site for the you know the trailing six months three months so last three months for the last six months for the last one year uh, I shouldn't have you know a downtime more than let's say 10 hours 
for the last let's say three months i don't want to have a downtime more than 10 hours and um, that can you know can also translate into multiple slos you can define so my error rate should not breach than you know five percent for the last three months right uh, and then you can create these kind of slos now uh, how does this slo gets implemented and how do you observe it is where you have some indicators so those are the slis slis are the service level indicators and using your monitoring tools you start monitoring and see if uh, you know if your metrics breach that certain threshold or not for x amount of time so you define it's not just the data that you monitor in the sense that hey what is the current rate of uh, throughput or current latency if the latency is high for one minute it's still okay you generally count it for a slot of five minutes or slot of 10 minutes or slot of you know 15 minutes and so on so you basically go and look at whether my you know latency was uh, you know over crossed this particular threshold or not for the last five minutes if it did you are basically breaking the slis and you know slis uh, and based on that you graph it and your latency should stay mostly down below this threshold and uh, when it crosses you are basically you know um, breaking the sli uh, there and that is how you major basically you don't major for every single minute and alert start alerting people based on that uh, you basically measure it for the last uh, five minutes and the slot of five minutes and that becomes one data point for you and then you plot it using uh, of you know you, you create a chart for your slo create a threshold for that and if it is uh, your error budget uh, based on that you create something called as error budgets and error budgets are oh, the leeway so 10 hours is my error budget for the three months time for example right because i have a guarantee of let's say 99.9 percent uh, which leaves me with uh, you know a very little so 100 minus 99 percent is what i calculate and based on that i come up with the downtime that I can I can afford now this downtime is important because it's important to update your systems if you do if you try to achieve 100 percent of availability it is both difficult and expensive to do and that way if you're trying for 100% uh, it's very little leeway that you have for upgrading your system maintaining your system uh, pushing all the changes that you want which which the customers are asking for and uh, if you want to have that leeway you have to have uh, a you know sort of a, a reasonable uh, SLO and a reasonable SLAs based on that and this is how the SLAs SLOs and SLIs you know are defined basically in an organization and this is between your if this is internal both of these are internal and then to implement this is where you would need some observability system and that is where your uh, tools such as prometheus and grafana come in or you can also use tools such as elastic search and then kibana along with that because even kibana is useful here because you can collect the error rate from your logs and uh, you can based on that you can graph it and you can define an sli based on that and based on that you can create slos and then based on this and adding some buffer you go and talk to your customers and say that this is my sla and when you talk about site reliability engineering all of this becomes important site reliability engineering is a very specific implementation of devops to ma maintain and manage large scale public facing typically sites and when you talk about sre these practices are very useful to have and why we are talking about in this lesson here is because all of this ultimately will translate into something that you could implement using your observability systems here and that is where our monitoring observability systems would start to matter i hope uh, you found these concepts useful and um, i hope you enjoyed this session